Welcome to another true, creepy Halloween story, Roadside Grim Reaper. This happened about 10 years ago. I was getting ready to fly with my mom back to upstate New York so she could have her fall family dinner with her brothers and sisters. It was late at night, about midnight, when I turned from one small country paved road onto another. When my headlights caught on something large and black fluttering on the edge of the road, on the other side of the road ditch. I thought it was maybe a large black trash bag or a black tarp blowing in the wind, but it didn't feel at all that windy against the car. And it was moving, moving alongside the road ditch. Then, to my shock, I realized it was something or someone running. Now, not really running, but sort of slow, clumsy gallop. I slowed down trying to get a better look at it. I always drove with my high beams on, and then it turned. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was the Grim Reaper, and he was facing me and running sideways, waving his arms as if he was beckoning me. When I got over my initial shock, I floored it and I took the next turn on the gravel road, which was my road, and decided I had to go back and get another look and a picture. No one was going to believe me. Here in Missouri, roads are all a mile apart in most cases in the country. So I sped to the next corner, turned, then turned again, and came back out on the black top where I saw it, him, the thing. I had my cell phone out. It took amazingly good pictures in the dark. I've done it before of animals and such through my headlights. And there he was still loping down the other side of the road ditch. I started slowing down. My plan was to stop long enough to take a quick picture or two and then get the hell out of there. I was almost to him. Then he turned, stopped, and started waving me down. I was about to stop when he took a step towards the road. And suddenly the words, Bad idea, screamed in my head. No way. I didn't care if anyone believed me or not. I was not taking a chance on this at all. I sped up, turned the corner, which was right there, and sped to my house. I told the guy I was living with why I was speeding into the driveway. I was sure he would not believe me. I asked if he wanted to go look. He laughed, like, no, I believe you. There's no way we are going to go looking for some grim reaper. Everyone that I told this tale to said they believed me because there was no way anyone was ever going to make up such a story like that. I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing. But it really did happen. 
just that way. And what's worse, no one in town ever said that they had been pranking people along the road dressed as the Grim Reaper. I hope you enjoyed that little true story that I just shared with you that happened uh, probably about 10 years ago. And I hope you are enjoying watching me paint um, this picture. It is being done on uh, glow-in-the-dark paint, which is very difficult to paint on with acrylics. Um, and I'm going to now share some history about the Grim Reaper. So stay with me. Thank you. The Grim Reaper is the Lord of Death, a black shrouded specter who appears when your time on earth has come to an end. Although his personality and his work are as mysterious as death itself, one thing is for certain. He's not someone you want to meet any time soon. Throughout all of recorded history, different personifications of death exist in all cultures. Ancient people took a friendlier approach to death. For example, Thanatos, the Greek god of death, was an attractive and noble-hearted young man, and the Valkyries, who decided which Norse soldiers should die in battle, were beautiful and heroic women. The turning point in our attitude towards death came in the 14th century, when Europe was ravaged by the Black Plague. In some cities, as many as five people died from the plague, decaying bodies piled up in the streets, and everyone had loved ones to grieve. During the plague, artists began drawing death as horrific figure. Skeletons armed with deadly weapons danced among the plague victims in the streets. They rode white horses with wagons full of bodies. Eventually, a black-cloaked figure, the first of the recognizable of the Grim Reapers, began appearing, leading these ghastly processions. The dark costume of the Grim Reaper and the curved scythe may have been inspired by the plague doctors who wore dark shrouds and bird-like masks to protect themselves from breathing the infected air. The name Grim Reaper didn't appear until the 19th century. Although the Grim was a popular nickname for death that dated all the way back to the 13th century. The Grim Reaper, unlike earlier personifications of death, has a ghoulish appearance that has made him a favorite Halloween costume for many generations. The Reaper's looks start with a long black cloak. The cloak, which wraps all the way around the specter's body, shrouds his face and has a deep hood. It is usually loose and tattered, and bits of black flutter in the wind as the Reapers move. The reaper carries a sigh in his hand, 
a long pole with a curved blade fixed to the top. The sai, which is traditionally used to harvest crops at the end of the fall, is in this case for the reaper used to harvest souls at the end of their life. The specter may also carry an hourglass, which he uses to measure the amount of time left in a soul's life. He may travel on the back of a ghostly white horse or in a chariot pulled by white horses. Few people have glimpsed the figure beneath the black cloak and live to tell the tale. Most legends paint the reaper as a skeleton, a skeleton of white bones and an empty skull. Only a few claim that nothing but a dark void lurks beneath the cloak. The Grim Reaper takes the lives of people because it is their fate to die. In many ways, his work is beneficial. He ends their suffering of those who are old or sick. The Grim Reaper's most mysterious skill is the ability to separate souls from their bodies. Most stories claim that the mere presence of the specter will begin to draw the soul from the body. With just the crook of one bony finger, the Grim Reaper can break your bonds to the living world forever. After the Reaper has collected your soul, he will serve as a guide who helps you find your way into the next realm. There are a few stories who describe heroes who have managed to trick the Grim Reaper or to convince him not to take their souls. Even in some cases, the Reaper has given some people talismans that have made them immortal. This previous information was from mythology.net. I thought I would also include um, a couple of small tales about death. Um, the first one is from Aesop's Fables, and I love Aesop's Fables along with Brothers Grimm and Edgar Allan Poe. This one is called The Old Man and Death. An old man cut himself a bundle of faggots in a wood and struggled to carry them home. He had a long way to go and was tired out before he had got much more than halfway. Casting his burden on the ground, he called upon death to come and release him from his life of toil. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when, much to his dismay, death stood before him and professed his readiness to serve him. He was almost frightened out of his wits, but he had enough presence of mind to stammer out, Good sir, if you'd be so kind, pray help me up with my burden again. This is from Death's Messengers. 
entitled Death's Approach Should Surprise No One. Death promised a man that he would not take him without first sending messengers. The man's youth soon passed and he became miserable. One day, death arrived, but the man refused to follow him because the promised messengers had not yet appeared. Death responded, Have you not been sick? Have you not experienced dizziness, ringing in your ears, toothache, and blurred vision? These were my messengers. The man, at last recognizing the truth, quietly yielded and went away. Here are some different folklore that surrounds death. It is said that death generally announces its coming by some mysterious noise, such as a knocking at the wall or a door, a rumbling in the floor, or that dying person themselves make known their decease in a similar strange sounds. One such is three loud and distinct knocks at the bed's head of a sick person, or at the bed's head or door of any of his relations, is an omen of his death. Many families have particular warnings, some by the appearance of a bird, and others by the figure of a tall woman, dressed all in white, who goes shrieking about the house. This apparition is common in Ireland, and goes by the name of the Banshee, or the Shrieking Woman. The meowing of a black cat at midnight is a sure sign of coming death. A German superstition states that if a black cat sits on the bed of a sick person, it is a sign that they will die. Dogs are thought by many to have a peculiar sense of approaching trouble, and it is thought that dogs, in cases of sicknesses, know the outcome ahead of time. If a dog is persistent at howling under your window, it foreshadows a death in the house. Others say that a dog scratching on the floor is an ominous Omen. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you um, have a wonderful the rest of the week and the rest of the weekend and it's starting to look a lot more like October out there. Everybody have a wonderful day and evening. Night-night.